give you a second chance. I'm going to play the music again. And they, again, don't do it. And they say to the king these words. They say, we do not need to defend ourselves against the king. We do not need to defend ourselves. If we are thrown into the furnace, our God will protect us. And if he does not, we still will not worship your gods. Did you hear that? And I believe they said it with calmness, with a sense of uh, realization, a sense of purpose. We are not defending ourselves alone. Our God will be with us. And then the reality, what I call reality gospel. If God is not in the furnace with us, if God does not save us, then we will die rather than worship your gods. Do you see the calmness they have of facing death? That's a fascinating. Death is a fascinating subject uh, for all people. It's the number one fear. I'm sure you know that. And it's interesting, I looked up again, one of the things that we study as pastors or chaplains or whatever is the five stages of death and dying. The five stages that uh, Kubler-Ross made famous. And the first one is that we deny it. Or no, let me get, let me get them right. I think denial, yes. The first one is, is that we deny it. Look at those pages flipping by, Jeff. The first one is that we deny death. The second one is that we get angry at death. The third one is that we begin to bargain. You know, God, give me just a few more years or let me see this or let me do this before I die. The fourth one is depression. And the fifth one is finally acceptance. And it's interesting to me that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had already come to stage five, the acceptance. They knew the results of the furnace. They knew the king was going to literally throw them into the furnace. And they accepted the fact willingly because they knew that if that happened, either God would protect them or they would be with God. God would protect them or they would be with God. You know, those stages apply to a lot of things besides death. They apply to things that happen in our lives, things like divorce or things like addiction or things like a loss of a job or a loss of relationship or all of those stages can happen when we lose, when we feel a loss of control or power. Where did Shadrach, Meshach's and Abednego's peace and calm come from? How did they get to that stage of acceptance? It came from their deep and abiding faith in the one true God. In the almighty God, the Lord of Lords, King of Kings, the maker of the heavens and earth, the God who controls life and death. Their deep faith that God was with them, whatever the outcome. It wasn't a prosperity gospel. It wasn't, oh yes, God's going to make this right and everything's going to be perfect. That's not what Christianity's about. Christianity is that God is with us during all of our parts of life, the highs and the lows. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you, what? Are with me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of Of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. That's what our whole series of Daniel is about. 
God is with us. Do you believe it? God is with us during feelings of helplessness, during periods of health problems, during periods of transition, during periods of divorce or, I don't know, the list goes on and on. Anxiety, depression, God is with us. Death, God is with us. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of fill in the blank. Maybe it's just a feeling of overwork or overwhelmed or even with the traffic cop. God is with us. And I will fear no evil. Well, you know the rest of the story. The young man made it out of the furnace without a single singed hair. There was not even the smell of smoke of him. But the most amazing thing is when the king looked into the fire, he didn't see three men unbound and walking around. He saw how many? Four. And the king in amazement cried out, and the fourth one is like a son of God. Now, we can argue uh, biblical scholars will argue, was it an angel that God sent? Was it literally Jesus Christ himself to be there with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? A lot of biblical scholars say that this is a, a pre-appearance of Christ. But we do know, literally, that in their time of need, God was with them. The question today is, how do we handle problems? How do we handle those times in our lives when, when things seem out of control, when things are not going the way we want them to go? Do we handle them like King Nebuchadnezzar with anger? Do we become furious with rage? Or do we handle them like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego with a sense of calm? a sense of peace, to know that even this, even this problem, even this crisis, even this, this time that I'm going through is in God's hands. And God is with me. The choice is yours. God doesn't want you to walk through life alone. God doesn't want anyone to walk through life alone. God wants to walk with us. God wants to be with us. Have you invited him into your life? Have you invited him to be part of your life? Don't do life alone. There's nothing more devastating. There's nothing more anger generating than to try to do life alone. God wants to walk with us. Would you pray with me?